in scoring and rebounding. And he sits eighth in the all-time scoring list with 1,895 points. Wolf from Central Centralia, Illinois, has started in all 32 games and is averaging 8.5 points, 4.8 rebounds, and 4.9 assists. He leads the AMC in assists and is McKendry's career leader in the category uh, um, with 538. A four-year starter for Bearcats is Couplin, and he's averaging 6.8 points and 5.3 rebounds while shooting 54% from the field. Then we take a look at the other side of the court and we see Southern Nazarene is there. They earned an automatic bid by way of winning the Sooner Athletic Conference Tournament. That is the program's third win in school history for the conference. Their coach says it's encouraging that we're playing our best basketball right now and we're thrilled that we get another week to practice and prepare for this tournament in Kansas City. Um, they, they feel like they guarded well at the end of the season and that really helped them get into their transition. The Crimson Storm will return all five starters from last year's team, including the All-American first team, Xavier Alexander, and All-American all will mention um, A.J. Thomas. Xavier Alexander was a 09-10 All-American and two-time All-Sac first team selection, and he is really the heart of the Crimson Storm team. The senior guard averages 13 points and six rebounds a game and is hitting nearly 50% from the field. C.J. Henry, um, is the SAC tournament MVP and leads the team in scoring at 13.4 points and is shooting 45% from the field. Southern uh, Nazarene is 58 and 46 all time again at the national tournament field, not counting conference opponents. This will be the very first meeting between McKendry and Southern Nazarene. Um, the Crimson Storm are making their 11th appearance, as we mentioned, and are 12 and 9 all time. They have one title, winning it in 1981. They reached the championship game in 98, but um, lost and then last last year in the final eight before falling to Robert Morris. So two good teams, a lot of history here, and this should be a great matchup. Hey, do you think the sentimental favorite is McKendry with uh, Harry Statham? 45 years, over a thousand wins, and no national title? I think it's certainly got to be an emotional piece, and certainly something his boys want to deliver for him, and something that he would like to finally see happen. But I mean, seriously, can you imagine coaching 45 years? And a, a thousand wins is really nice, I'm sure. That's just an incredible achievement to stick around for that long. Sticking, really, a, sticking around is a large part of success, and he's done it. It really is, and um, considering you're 10 years younger than me, you probably can't imagine coaching 45 years, but I almost can. So it's just amazing. It's really good. It's 1965 by my reckoning. As uh, McHenry takes on Southern Nazarene University, these two teams meet, as you said, for the first time despite their success. 14 appearances for McHenry. This is the 15th and 11th for Southern Nazarene University. And now let's meet our starting lineups. Steppy, Andy Wolf, Eric Hobby, Brad Copeland, and David Luckman. 
and for Southern Nazarene University, A.J. Thomas, C.J. Henry, Xavier Alexander, John West, and Jeremy Lightfoot. Southern Nazarene coached by Adam Bohach and McKendra University by Harry Statham, the all-time wins leader in men's collegiate basketball history. And we are ready to go for this first round matchup between the Bearcats of the American Midwest Conference and the Crimson Storm of the Sooner Athletic Conference. I'm Rick Cole with Carlo Cole, and we thank the NAIA for having us for this Webstream production on the NAIA website. We hope you enjoy the presentation today. Lightfoot will jump it up against David Weckman. McHenry in the white uniforms and Southern Naz in the black uniforms. A lot of folks here today, a lot of youngsters here today at Municipal Auditorium. They introduced some of the Champions of Character school recipients between games during the warm-up period for this game. And we are about ready to tip off this third game of the day. The other winners so far today Georgetown defeated Olivet Nazarene University, and Concordia of California rolled over Southern Poly of Georgia. Well, today we haven't had any big upsets. There were some upsets yesterday in our play, um, defeating the number 11 position, the number 6, the number 14. So certainly um, upsets occur. Well, I misspoke, actually. I misspoke out of lack of knowledge, as Xavier Alexander is actually the one to jump it up for Southern Nazarene, and they will take the ball first. A.J. Thomas on the perimeter, guarded initially by Andy Wolf. Down low, they back it in. This turnaround, good, and that's Xavier Alexander, a senior from Forest Park, Oklahoma. He started his career at George Washington University. Xavier is certain, uh, certainly a player you're going to want to stay close to, and you're going to want to try to shut down however you can. Kendry's first offensive possession. Outside the drive by Wolf, and he got inside, couldn't hit it, and Lightfoot grabs the rebound. On the run come the Crimson Storm. A.J. Thomas, hook, pull up jumper by C.J. Henry, offensive rebound. He is put back up by John West, or he thought about it at least before hopping it outside. No reason to hurry here with nearly a full shot clock. Henry was the Sooner Athletic Conference tournament most valuable player. Tipped out of bounds off the miss, and it belongs to McKendry. McKendry from Lebanon, Illinois. They went 12 and two in the American Midwest Conference, tied Columbia College for the top spot there. They were defeated by Park University, another NAIA qualifier in this national tournament in the tournament championship game. David Ruckman a little bit short, rebounded by Alexander. Comes in storm, push it up. Alexander waiting and a foul on McHenry. Looked like they got, well, who did they get here? Brad Copeland apparently. That, that's who's on the board. Brad Copeland, a 6'7 senior from O'Fallon, Illinois. Southern Nazarene will have possession. Two to nothing, Southern Nazarene leads it. You can see the score and the time on your screen. John West, C.J. Henry, dishing it underneath to Xavier Alexander and through lots of traffic, can't hit it. Another rebound for David Wuckman. He's a 6'7 post. Drive by McHenry's John Steppe, a little too strong, and then contact underneath. Looks like they're going to call this again against Copeland, the senior, and two quick fouls on him. So quickly off the bench for McHenry comes Garrett Gaffner. Gaffner, a freshman from Brees, Illinois. So Gaffner in and Copeland out for Harry Statham. What a career he's had with over 1,000 wins now. Two team fouls for uh, McHenry. Xavier Alexander in for the dunk. That was a really nice assist too. And I believe that came from C.J. Henry. Just a nice use of his team, understanding that um, Alexander was there and ready. Southern Nazarene up by four here early. Gaffner looking for some room. Outside to John Steppe, a sophomore guard. And Gaffner can't hit, but the offensive rebound to David Ruckman. So McHenry, another chance here, trying to get off the blocks 
Almost three minutes into this game. Well done by Reckman to get out and get that rebound. Good pass underneath by Gaffner, but the shot blocked away. Blocked again. A.J. Thomas in the open floor. Spots C.J. Henry. And the long rebound tipped out, and here comes McHenry. Two on two, break his step, he goes in, and he cannot hit it. Steffi saves it into the hands of Ruckman. And Ruckman finally able to break the scoring drop three minutes into this game, a little more than three minutes. Look, very scrappy play right there by Ruckman and Steffi. Very well done. Down on the blocks, this is Jeremy Lightfoot, a senior. He's 6'9", and he is tied up underneath there by Eric Hobby. Outstanding job by Hobby. He got his hands on and he stayed clean. He didn't just put his hands on and stand. He kept his feet moving, which is what kept him from being pulled into the player. And sometimes that's hard to do because when you move your feet, sometimes your hands slip off. But good strength, good anticipation. Southern Nazarene by two. McKendry with the basketball in white moving left to right. I want to thank the folks at New Lion Productions, the parent company of Jump TV, for their camera work and direction on these video telecasts. And we're tied at four in the short little jumper by Garrett Gaffner. Good pass, good penetration by Steffi to set him up. And you know, we've seen a lot of camera work over the years, and they've done a really nice yes, job. They have. That won't go down for Xavier Alexander, but the offensive rebound to C.J. Henry. Henry again on the wing. Alexander from the baseline. Didn't know where to go with the ball. Gives it to Horace McGloster who is in. And McGloster's shot a little bit short. He's a 6'7 junior. So tied at four here in the early going. Four and a half minutes or so gone by. Andy Wolf for McHenry outside and then quickly to the high post. David Ruckman. Off the screen, the follow away by Eric Hobby, but he can't hit it. Alexander will give it off to A.J. Thomas. Henry on defense, being urged on by head coach Harry Statham. The drive inside, left-handed shot, walked over, the follow is good. And it is Horace McLoster who got the follow-up Carla for the basket, six to four. It's Southern Nazarene leading it, and I think it's McKendry calling the timeout here and checking the board. It is the basket credited to McGloster, and I haven't seen who called the timeout. Did you happen to see it? Nope, now they put it yes. on the board. It's McKendry that did call the timeout. So we're just underway here, six to four. McKendry in the light around Harry Statham. The assistance, or the assistant is Eric Echelbaugh for Harry Statham. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Guys came out to throw balls into the crowd. They look like maybe junior high age guys. And um, one guy just burst out laughing because he threw the ball right at a girl who wasn't looking. <laughs> and it made him laugh. And that's what made me laugh. And they love plastic balls. It didn't hurt her. But it totally caught her by surprise. <clears throat> I love the side show that goes on here. It's just a fun party atmosphere here at the tournament. Should mention that Sean Rockers is not in the lineup for McHenry today, their leading scorer, leading rebounder. He is sitting on the bench, I believe, in street clothes. He's got some warm-up pants on. McHenry with the basketball on the wing. It's off the knee of Southern Naz's Daniel White, who's in. Off the McHenry bench comes Let's see, Mike Springs, a freshman guard, fights he 10 inches tall from Waukegan, Illinois. Now look at A.J. Thomas of the Crimson Storm. Springs with the pass, drive inside, layup too strong initially, and then the follow-up by Shane, uh, excuse me, by uh, David Ruckman. Ruckman's doing a really nice job on um, following up on the offensive board. And turning the corner, a foul on the drive by Daniel White. The foul committed by McHenry's, I believe it's Carrington Pettiford who is in there. It is 6'1 junior from Florissant, Missouri. Went to Christian Brothers High School in the St. Louis area. Southern Nazarene inbounding. McGloster on the wing, gives it up to Alexander, the 6'6 senior. Adrian Hunter, uh, excuse me, uh, yep, that is Adrian Hunter, and then the three taken and hit by Horace McGloster. McGloster 25% from behind the arc, and Hobby with a long three, 
and he's knocked to the ground. He'll get three free throws out of it. So the Gloucester hits the three for Southern Nazarene. Hobby comes right back and squeezes a quick three, and we'll have a chance at the free throw line. Xavier Alexander with the foul, his first, and actually the first team foul for Southern Nazarene. 9-6, the Crimson Storm lead. Hobby, though, has a chance to tie if he can make all three. That's his first point of the game. An 86% free throw shooter, 41% from the field, and 33% from behind the arc, averaging 18 and a half points a game. <laughs> he wasn't real sure about that one, was he? No, he was not. And that he has a unique style. There's very little leg. He does go up on his toes to make the shot, but that's almost before he pushes with his arms. It's very interesting shooting form, but it's certainly productive yet as, as he's two out of two so far. Well, he had a little bit of leaning tower of Pisa look to him. Yeah, he, he did. Followed through, but he hits all three, and we're tied at nine here. Southern Nazarene quickly down. This is John West giving up, getting it right back. West inside. And the bounce pass through traffic. Daniel White fighting for it now. Loose on the floor still. Nobody with possession. And finally it's tied up with the possession arrow favoring the Crimson Storm. It's interesting to me that some people feel like they have to continue to hold on the ball after you get the jump call. And just then that happened as well. The two people involved, I know that it was Daniel White for Concordia. I'm not sure who the other player was. But the whistle's blown. The jump is called. And yet nobody lets go of the ball, and it becomes a tussle. It's, Just a, it's a guy thing. Uh, is it? That's There's why I don't understand. inside contact as McGloster tried to work his way free, but he is bumped from behind, ends up traveling. That's why I don't understand yeah. it then. It's a dude thing. Uh, gotta, okay. He can't that let go That does explain first. it. That does explain a lot. John Steppy for McKendry and stepping in front. McGloster steals and slams. Wow, fantastic work by McGloster. Very smart play, very uh, reactionary. Good read on the ball and interception on the pass. And then a nice finish, way to stay calm and collected. McGloster with seven points. Steppy works his way inside, fouled from the side. So 11 to nine, Southern Nazarene leads it. A couple of free throws coming up for sophomore guard John Steppe. He was an academic all-conference player in the American Midwest Conference this year. Good look at the sophomore who will have two here. Chance to tie the game for McKinley and right down the middle for Steppe. McKinley shooting 46% as a team from the floor and that's 11th best in the nation. 63% though from the free throw line. That is not real good when you stack them up against other teams. However, Steppy hits two and we're tied at 11. Adrian Hunter into the ball game, gives it up to John West. Back to Hunter and the three rattles it somehow. Found a way to squeeze in. Somebody lost their mark on Hunter. Nobody was on him. He stood for quite some time waiting for the ball and then yeah, we're gonna, they're going to call a foul on Daniel White for that reaching in. Well, Hunter certainly had a lot of time to take a shot and a nice delivery on the three-point shot. Hunter's a good three-point shooter, 41% from behind the arc. This is a team that, as a team, shoots 36%. Yeah, and so that isn't a guy you should just leave standing open. That's my point. McHenry's Andy Wolf with the basketball. Garrett Gaffner, the freshman, back to Wolf. Gaffner fighting for position down low there on the right blocks, gets the ball knocked away. Back the other way, C.J. Henry on the turnover. McLoster with the instrumental touch, too, to get the steal. He's quite a defensive player. Adrian Hunter hit the three a moment ago. He'll work against the big guys in an offensive foul. We have seen a ton of offensive fouls called today, not to say that they're bad calls, just no, we've they're... seen more than your average. They, they are good calls, I think. And you know, when you think about it, these are aggressive kids who are used to playing hard. And sure. So at times, you'll see that aggressive play go the other way. Sure, and you need to, in some ways, kind of feel out how your officials for this particular team, how they feel about it. Sometimes they'll let them go, and sometimes they won't. But you need to kind of feel that out and see what they're going to call and, and risk it. Hobby off the mark again for McKendry and the drive inside. That could be another offensive foul. And it is. It is this time on McGloster, I think. 
So back to back player control fouls on Southern Nazarene University. And McGloster does have two. Number 15 there is Xavier Alexander for the black clad Southern Nazarene University Crimson Storm. Seven and a half minutes into the game, and McGloster, who is a huge key in the um, Southern Nazarene team, has two fouls. That's not good news. He had 11 in the conference championship game against and, Northwestern Oklahoma. And now he sits down, and that's why that's bad news for them. And some pushing and shoving underneath, and out of bounds, it'll belong to Southern Nazarene. So Southern Nazarene and McKendry there, all kinds of physical underneath here in the first part of this game. Adrian Hunter and Alexander on the outside. Off the screen, John West, but covering his hobby defensively, and that ball thrown away belongs to McKendry. Five turnovers now for Southern Nazarene. Only three for McKendry. A.J. Thomas comes back in for the Crimson Storm. Adam Bohach in his third year at the school. All three of his head coaching years have been at Southern Nazarene. Andy Wolf for the Bearcats. Hobby feeding inside, turning. Ruckman getting the shot off, blocked by Lightfoot. He's got a couple of blocks in this game. And the other way comes the Crimson Storm. Ruckman worked really hard, too, to try to get away from Lightfoot. And he just was not able to. Lightfoot all over that. Alexander can't hit the open look, and it's saved in bounds by Andy Wolf. On the run, John Steppy. Good look down the middle. The cutter hits the shot. That's Andy Wolf on the drive. 6-1 senior Andy Wolf from Centralia, Illinois. Averaging eight and a half points a game. West inside, lost the ball, and all of a sudden the Crimson Storm can't keep a hold of the basketball. Their bench reacts with not much reaction at all. He played several minutes with no score change at all at the 14 to 11 mark. And then finally McKendry just scored, but we had played almost three minutes with no score at all. Nearing the midway part of this half. 20 is Carrington Pettiford. Off on the wing, Wolf bounces it off the leg of an SNU player. Some of the cheerleaders here. And they'll set up the baseline play as throwing it in will be John West. Oh, take that back, you couldn't see it. It's McKinley throwing it in. And a quick whistle, Hobby threw the inbounds pass with a foul away from the ball. And on C.J. Henry. Six team foul, so we'll be in the bonus for McKendry. They'll be shooting on their next time they're fouled. Garrett Gaffner is back in. Brad Copeland got a couple of early fouls for McKendry, and Gaffner has had to play some significant minutes here. Andy Wolf matched up against Southern Nazarene, C.J. Henry, and that ball kicked. So they'll set up the inbounds on the other side. Wolf centers it up. Pettiford on the left side, double team, nowhere to go. Hobby, they've marked him closely throughout this first half. Wolf on the drive. Into the corner, Pettiford. Still 10 to shoot. Luckman inside, and he made it look easy. He really did. He's, he's a big guy. He's got some decent body mass, and yet he's pretty light-footed, and he plays against light-foot, so it's kind of fun to see those two match up because they're both very quick-footed for big guys. McHenry's first lead of the game to my recollection, and West going inside. He'll go to the free-throw line to try to change that score around. So West has been tough off the boards, a 6'6 junior from Plano, Texas. He went to Plano East High School. Has a chance for a couple of free throws here on the foul by Garrett Gaffner. There's Gaffner, 52, and for the Crimson Storm, Xavier Alexander. West's first point ties it at 15. It's our fifth tie of the game. So both teams staying very close to each other. The scoring column. And Southern Naz back on top by one. 
Hendry and Southern Nazarene, I was amazed when you said that these two teams have never faced each other. Quick three, won't go for Pettiford. He's a 32% shooter from the arc. Another chance, a little bit short that time by Wolf. Southern Nazarene by a point. C.J. Henry contact oh and another offensive foul. And he's holding a knee. He may have, and hopefully this is the case, that he just uh, ran his knee into something hard and it's not a serious injury other than it hurts like heck. And he looks like he's going to be able to get back to his feet, but in a little bit of pain there as he's attended to by the trainers along the baseline. 9.51 left in the first half. It's been a great one so far between Southern Nazarene and McKendree University. Georgetown has won earlier today. Concordia of California has won earlier today. And the winner of this game will play Georgetown Friday at 12.30. That's tomorrow at 12.30, right? The days are flying by. They are. This tournament goes very quickly. Lots of games in a very fast time period. 16 first round games spread over the first two days of the tournament. Then tomorrow there will be eight more games. They are still working on the injured player. It is over on that middle left of your screen where they're working on him off the court. Meanwhile, Southern Nazarene uses this as an unofficial timeout and CJ Henry to his feet. And again, hopefully nothing serious for C.J. Henry. And I, I'll bet you he just got one of those uh, funny bone kind of hits to the knee. I hope that's what hopefully. it is. Hopefully. We don't want players hurt. We want them in the game so we can see who what pe teams have. But he will make his way slowly toward the Crimson Storm bench. Crimson Storm are from the Sooner Athletic Conference. They were second place during the regular season, but won the tournament against Northwest Oklahoma State. And they have won five straight games coming into this NAIA first round game. Henry trails by one. They have the basketball moving left to right. Wolf at the three point line. And the shot, no good. Trying to draw the foul was Hobby. There's the long outlet and a short lived two on one break. John West. Drive by Daniel White in traffic, nearly threw it away, and another player takes a hit to the body, shaking up is Andy Wolf, and he will go down on a knee. And I think as they spun around, he's holding his back. Yeah, it looks like, like maybe that. Maybe he got an elbow or something in the back, or we'll a knee, see. perhaps. Yep. But now he is down, so they will take a moment to look at him. Andy Wolf, a 6'1 senior from Centralia, Illinois, and they will attend to him here as you see him on the floor, obviously in a lot of paint. He was right in the middle of the paint when he got hit from behind. That was clear. And they are indeed, as you can see, working on his back. Well, we have a moment here. Let's remind you of some of the corporate sponsors for this national tournament. Mutual of Omaha Insurance Company is one. They provide insurance coverage for all your student athletes. You can contact the folks at Mutual of Omaha for your collegiate accident insurance needs. And Midwest Trophy Manufacturing is another sponsor of this tournament. They are the official trophy and award provider for the NAIA. They help the shaken up player to his feet, Andy Wolf. Again, we hope it's nothing serious for Andy. It doesn't appear to be other than kind of painful to get hit in that kidney area. Sure. Southern Nazarene will throw the ball inbounds. They lead by a point here in this first round game. Nobody's led by more than two. The game has stayed that close in this first 10 minutes of play. Daniel White giving it up. We'll get it right back. 10 to shoot now. West on the wing through three players. Man-to-man -man defense by McKendry. A.J. Thomas, they got to get rid of it. Thomas will force it up. And the rebound knocked right back to him. A new shot clock for the Crimson Storm, Southern Nazarene University of Bethany, Oklahoma. And a foul away, good by Xavier Alexander. He has half a dozen here in the first half. He's kind of a calming force on the court, isn't he? When it finally gets into his hands, things just seem to calm down. Foul from behind, looks like Jeremy Lightfoot, a little bit too aggressive going after the pass. His first foul of the game and the team eighth 
foul. And that should put McHenry in the one and one. David Rutman will take the first free throw. 6'7", sophomore from Freeburg, Illinois. But well, they've got some young players, some talented young players here in McHenry. The starting guard, John Steppi, a sophomore. They start Ruckman, a sophomore. Bring a freshman off the bench. Gaffner was the first in off the bench today. Still checking out Wolf on the bench. But it seems to be okay. Lightfoot inside and a three second call on Lightfoot. So he was in there a little bit too long. They turned the ball over. 8.24 to play in this first half. A three point SNU lead. Locking the ball up, Mike Springs. Steppy on the wing, inside Gaffner. Right back to the outside, maybe blocked. At the shot way short by Steppy, and there comes Daniel Light. West, nowhere to go. Patient on the outside. Alexander backing in. Lightfoot in traffic, line drive shot, got his hands on the rebound, but Ruckman wraps it up among all that traffic. Ruckman does a nice job. I'm impressed by him. Springs throws it up for grabs a little bit, out of control, throws it off the heel, and gets the benefit of the kick call. And good news for McKendry, Wolf coming back yeah, in. Yeah, that game. is good news. Adrian Hunter is also in for SNU. Wolf will handle the basketball after he took that shot to the back a moment ago. Looking for an opening inside. Boy, both these teams are quick in their man-to-man. -man. And Ruckman inside. Came loose. Back outside. Steppy for three. Oh, my goodness. Great rebound, too, by Wolf. And dishing it right out to Steppy, giving him that chance to get that. While everybody was pulled inside, he gave Steppy the open look. Effingham, Illinois, is the home for John Steppy. Ties it at 18. Lightfoot out of control a wee bit. And that's a St. Patrick's Day thing, by the way. A wee bit. A wee bit. And Pettiford the other way for McHenry. These two teams tied at 18 with seven minutes left to play in the half. Steffi can't connect a second consecutive time. And here comes Southern Nazarene. Lightfoot on the baseline. Saves it back outside to A.J. Thomas. And he'll settle things down. White to Hunter. Alexander working his way in and got the roll. Eight for Xavier Alexander. Averages just under 13 per game. Around the screen, Pettiford working, getting free of Thomas and left handed puts it up and it won't go. Everything but down. And here comes Southern Nazarene leading by two. Three pointer, AJ Thomas and Steppy. Underneath with the rebound. McHenry looking to tie or take the lead here. Wolf inside. Gaffner, the freshman short. And tipped to Adrian Hunter of the Crimson Storm. Hunter to the three-point line and a whistle at timeout taken by Southern Nazarene University. They are number 10th ranked in the NAIA and the number 10 seed in this tournament, but getting all they can handle from the at-large McHenry Bearcats at 20 and 12. McHenry battling the Crimson Storm 26 and 7 here with five minutes and change left in the first half. What a great game. I love it when it's both like this. Both teams making the adjustments they need to. Um, Good people coming in off the bench, adding to the um, skill and the level of play. It doesn't drop when we get the subs in. Good teams, fun to watch. Winner of this game plays tomorrow afternoon at 12.30 against Georgetown of Kentucky. Georgetown got 24 points from Vic Moses today at defeating Olivet Nazarene University, 83 to 76. And Concordia, California had an easy time with Southern Poly of Georgia. Winning that one 96 to 64. Justin Johnson put on a pretty good show with 25 points for Concordia. Here a two-point game. Southern Nazarene with the basketball and the two-point lead. Daniel White 
off to guard on the left side, Adrian Hunter eventually. Alexander finding Hunter for the three. Second three-pointer for Hunter. Great shot by Hunter. He averages 2.5 points per game, so he's already doubled that. Wolf the other way, and now a five-point game oh. and a turnover. Daniel White, lead pass, and all the way in is A.J. Thomas. He gets it right back, tips it over to Daniel White for the score. Tell you what, A.J. Thomas was lucky to hang on to that ball initially. Made a grab in transition and was able to get it up. And in about 15 seconds, they're now down by seven. Yeah. That's the greatest deficit we've had at any point in the game. And a cut on the weak side, but partially blocked perhaps. No good by Andy Wolf. Here comes Southern Naz. A look away pass. Alexander for two. Wolf with the rebound. And Wolf nowhere to go as he reaches the baseline. Outside Hobby still is not able to hit, but does draw the foul on the three-point attempt. Xavier Alexander will get the call and send Hobby to the line for three. That's interesting. That's the third time I've seen him make that play where he takes the shooter down on the three-point shot. He's been called for the foul. That's his second foul. He's been called twice on it. He did it another time and didn't get called on it. But um, I'm not sure. I, I need to watch more carefully because what I do, your eyes want to follow the ball and see if it goes in. But I need to keep my eyes on the shooter and see what it is he's doing that's creating that foul because it's certainly something he should fix. It's not going to help. Abby hit three in a row uh, earlier in the game. Well, that's do it this time, misses the first of three. Eric struggling a little bit shooting here early on, 18 and a half points a game. Has a second one coming up. Into the game for McHenry is David Ruckman. And for the Crimson Storm, it looks like it is John West who has checked back in. Well, one more free throw for Eric Hobby. AMC Player of the Year in back-to-back -back years. That is pretty impressive. And not only that, but he's an academic all-conference player as well. And two out of three, his five points all from the free throw line. 25-20, Southern Nazarene leads this game. C.J. Henry in for A.J. Thomas for the Crimson Storm. Adam Bohatch's assistant coaches for Southern Nazarene, Artavius Bogan and Brian Humphreys. Crossover, C.J. Henry down low now, backing in, losing control is Milos uh, Milosovic, and he loses it out of bounds. Nope, it's touched last by McHenry. Milosovic, a 6'7 junior from Montenegro. Inside, and the foul will send Milosevic to the line. And the foul is on Brad Copeland, who picked up two early fouls, and just re-entered and picks up his third. Five team fouls. Mary Statham may be taking a little bit of a risk there, bringing in the guy with two fouls, and it doesn't pay off as he picks up his third. Meanwhile, Milosevic, who is a 61% free throw shooter, Misses that first one, has one more coming. Six feet, seven inches tall. Rebounded by Ruckman, also 6'7. SNU leads by five. McHenry goes on the offense. Underneath, Hobby for McHenry. Got himself free, can't hit it. Still without a field goal. Southern Nazarene on the run, Adrian Hunter. C.J. Henry brings it outside. Hunter again. West looking for an open spot. Oh. C.J. Henry and a foul's on the floor. Looks like Carrington Pettiford got a little too much of the body, wouldn't you say? Yes, I think he did. This is gonna be their sixth team foul, so he will not be shooting. And it was on Carrington. Mike Springs is back in for McHenry. And also for McHenry, John Steppy. Pettiford has two fouls now. 
and takes a seat on the bench. That's the 16th foul against McKendry, though. Yes, they've done a nice job. C.J. Henry on the outside. Milosevic down low, stolen away. Coming up with the loose ball is the freshman Gaffner, and here comes McHenry trying to cut into a five-point lead. Pass inside, can't be handled by, uh, handled by Ruckman, and now loose on the floor. Springs grabs it and calls timeout. Boy, Ruckman had a good pass come his way, but just let it slip out of his hands, and with 3.20 left, it'll be a timeout to McHenry University of Lebanon, Illinois. They list them in the uh, official guide here as a school of about 1,500. Southern Nazarene, just over 2,000, and they meet here in the NAIA tournament in the first round. It's Southern Nazarene with a five-point lead in what's been a very competitive first half. It really has. It's been a lot of fun. Both teams doing very well. The largest differential has been seven points, but they've been tied six times at four, six, nine, 11, 15, and 18. And uh, so um, just one little run there that Southern Nazarene took, they're actually, they actually have more turnovers though. They have eight turnovers to only four for McKendry. So um, certainly a well-balanced game. I'm excited to have them continue and, and see what happens. The winner will have uh, their hands full with Georgetown. Georgetown is the number seven seed in the tournament. They won by seven today against Olivet Nazarene. That game will be at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon here at Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City. This historic building has hosted the NAIA many times. Has hosted, I believe this is where the three overtime game between Kansas and North Carolina was played back in the day. It's been a venue for entertainment acts. Houdini has performed here. I'm a big Houdini fan, you know. You know how I like to disappear at times. Yes, I do. You know how I like to make you disappear. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Springs on the outside. They'll work it around. Still 14 to shoot. Down low, Hobby has been silenced from the field wow. and gets his first on a tough turnaround. And he did a great job. He rotated one direction, had nothing. Could not even get a hand up. Just spun back around and got the release quickly. And that's what's the tricky part of that. Daniel White uses a good screen on Hobby and he goes in and scores his second bucket. He's from Edmond, Oklahoma's Memorial High School. Back to a five point lead for Southern Nazarene. Down low, Ruckman. Ruckman losing the ball again. It's out of bounds. He thought it was touched last by Southern Naz, but it'll go off his hands and belong to the Crimson Storm. Well, certainly Lightfoot was climbing across his back in an effort to try and get it, so that may be why he thought he touched it, but um, no foul, and so we play on. Southern Nazarene in the black uniforms, McKendry in the white. John West thought about the shot, hops into the lane and hits the shot. John West has four, his first field goal, 6'6 junior from Plano, Texas. Two minutes, 10 seconds left to play in the game. I mean, first in half. the first half, sorry. Turnover by McHenry and the mm. Crimson Storm come up with it again. Henry not taking very good care of the basketball, especially down low, and the drive scores. Daniel White hits again. That's the second or third time that the ball handler ends up carrying scoring, and so you've really got to get something stopped there. You've got to force some passing at least. And Harry Statham is going to go to the bench, but before the sub comes in, he will call a timeout. Again, Henry playing without Sean Lockers today, the 6'7 junior that leads them in scoring and rebounding. He has not played today and appears to be in street clothes on the side, but still McKendry hanging in there with Southern Nazarene University. 31-22 as SNU stretches that lead just a little bit here under two minutes to play in the first half. Carla, you've heard me say it before and I'll stick with it that National Car Rental is the official automobile rental company of the NAIA. A higher level of service called National Car Rental. 800 car rent for National Car Rental. And Design Display is the official signage vendor for the NAIA. They provide innovative graphics and exhibit solutions. And they've been doing it for over 30 years. It's Design Display. And that's the story, and I am indeed sticking to it. Happy uh, St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. And from you, no happy St. Patrick's Day to me. What's up with that? Seriously, I'm, I'm you could say something offended. nice to me without me having to say something nice back to you. It's a Sid quo pro. <laughs> Happy things. 
Happy St. Patrick's oh, Day. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Yeah, I almost said that. Tommy from the top of the key. Well He's done. To heat up a little it bit. is nice to see him heat up. He's a missing piece to the McKendry puzzle, and it's nice to see him heat up and get back into the court. He averages 18.5 points a game, and he had nothing from the field until just recently. Back-to-back -back shots go down, and working hard inside Jeremy Lightfoot, his first basket. Lightfoot averages under seven points a game, has two today from Decatur, Georgia, and Holmes Community College. McKendry, Andy Wolf, Ruckman, up and under move against Lightfoot, lost it again. He has oh not been able to handle the ball in three of the last four trips down the floor. He's very aggravated by Lightfoot. Lightfoot's mauling him underneath, and he's not getting a call, and he doesn't like it. He's got to get a hold of the ball and go up, and I think that's when he'll get the call, but when he's still trying to handle it, he's not. it's not happening. So the eight-point lead for Southern Nazarene as we near halftime. West has an open look. And off the floor, it's Andy Wolf picking up the rebound. Long pass down to Gaffner, who saves it inbounds. And then Hobby inside. A little contact, but he hits another shot. And as you said a moment ago, he's starting to heat up a little bit. Yeah, Daniel White with the, hit the floor on that play. Daniel White trying to get something set, just not there in time. So there was no charge. Southern Nazarene still on the shot clock here. You can see the difference in the lower left-hand corner. White in the lane, tries to kick it out late, tipped and controlled for a moment, and then Hunter, well or rather Ruckman, has it off the save by Andy Wolf. Wolf has a lot of accolades, and that was a good example of why he's earned them. That was some great athleticism and really good effort. McKendry looks for the last shot. They better hurry. Hobby from the outside and way off the mark with just seven tenths of a second left. Not the best shot, but the best shot perhaps in the situation for Hobby. And Southern Nazarene will do a little more, I would think, than get it in bounds in the first half. Will be history here with Southern Nazarene leading at 33 to 27. The catch by Thomas, who will get the shot away, and very close, <laughs> but off the top of the board. 33 to 27, it's Southern Nazarene University leading it after one half. We'll have Carla take a look at our head coaches here in just a moment, but first want to tell you that Anthony Travel is the official travel partner of the NAIA. They'd like to congratulate all the NAIA championship teams on great seasons, and they are proud to assist those teams reach their destinations during the year and through the postseason. Anthony Travel, check out their website, anthonytravel.com, or you can call them at 866 ATI-NAIA. Again, Anthony Travel, the official travel partner of the NAIA. And Buffalo Funds is, of course, a sponsor of this national championship tournament. If you're looking for new mutual fund opportunities, research the Buffalo Funds website, buffalofunds.com. They are a proud sponsor not only of the tournament, but of the NAIA's Champions of Character program. And with a look at our two head coaches in this game is my wonderful wife, who never needs to be reminded to compliment me on St. Patrick's Day. Here's Carla Cole with a look at the two head coaches. Let it go. Okay. okay. <laughs> Southern Nazarene is coached by Adam Bohach. He began his third season at the helm of the Crimson Storm men's basketball program after guiding Southern Nazarene to the quarterfinals in 2010 in the NEI National Championship and to a 27-8 overall record and a 19-3 record in conference. He also coached his first All-American, and that is Xavier Alexander. In his first season, Bohawk took the Storm to a 2012 record in 08 and 09, and then finished sixth in the Sooner Athletic Conference with a 12 and 10 record. Bohawk then came to SNU from the um, I'm sorry, Bohatz came from the SNU from the United States Military Academy where he has served as an assistant for Jim Cruz during the 7 and 8 season. At West Point, Bohatz focused on recruiting. Army was a Patriot League semifinalist in post 7 and 8 and posted the program's most league wins in school history. Bohawk's recruiting class was ranked 77th in the nation by Hoopscoop. Bohawk originally came to Southern Nazarene in 04, where he served in as, as an assistant for Mike Broughton for three seasons. Um, and then, um, at that time, Bohawk was his main recruiter and helped guide SNU to the 07 SAC Tournament Championship and the Sweet 16 National Championship. In 07, SNU finished 6th 
in the final national poll. And Bohaj was SMU's recruiting coordinator, scouting coordinator, and video coordinator. And he coached SMU's perimeter players. He is a graduate of the Nebraska College where he performed Corn Nebraska University where he played for former Coach Huskers coach Barry Collier. He was now academic all Big 12 first team selection in 04 and a four year letterman. So he is not very old to be so successful in this league. Bohatch was Nebraska's most outstanding attitude award winner. Attitude award winner in 03 and 04 and was a Big 12 commissioner's honor roll recipient five times. He went to Nebraska from Kimball High where he was a standout player in high school. He was an all-state selection in 2000 and a leading career scorer in the state of Nebraska in 2000. From so Kimball, you came from Kimball, Nebraska? So you came from Nebraska. That's Do you remember true. him? Uh, no, I don't remember him. He's a little younger than I am. Yes. I grew up 45 miles away from there. He's from Kimball, huh? Yes, he is. Um, he averaged 26 points per game in high school. He was also, also an all-state football selection, so pretty much a stud. Let's just say that. He's married to former SMU basketball great player Christy Flesh. The two were married in August of 08. But you know, he's, he's a newcomer. He's got a lot of accolades behind him already. He's doing a lot of things. But when we look across the court, we see pretty much the opposite. The experience and the, and the um, education in Harry Statham. He's put together one of the most remarkable coaching careers in basketball history in his 45th season as the men's basketball coach at McKendree University. On November 13th, 09, Statham became the first men's college coach at the four-year level to record his thousandth career victory when he defeated East West University. Thanks to the Bearcats' 27 and seven record in nine and 10, Statham will enter the 2010-11 season with 1,022 career wins. Midway through the season, he became the all-time leader in games coached at all divisions of four-year college basketball. Statham, who has coached in 1,410 collegiate games, um, surpassed the record that was established by St. Mary's coach Jim Phelan, who guided his teams to a, over a 49-year career. During his career at McHenry, Statham has led the Bearcats to postseason play 39 times in 44 seasons. Wow. He coached McKendry in all 14 of its national tournament berths, including a run of five straight from 99 to 04. The list and rewards and honors received to Statham is endless. He was selected in 01 and 02 as NAIA's Men's Basketball Coach of the Year. He's received the AM Coach of the Year award eight times, including last season. He was a six-time recipient in the end. AIA District 20 Coach of the Year. He's been named the Illinois Basketball Coaches Association Coach of the Year 11 times. In 05, he was recognized by two national organizations for his coaching accomplishments. The National Association of Basketball Coaches in the convention, he was honored by his coaching peers as he received the organization's Guardians of the Game Leadership Award. Later that summer, he was named winner of the Distinguished Service Award from the United States Sports Academy. It's usually given to individuals who've made outstanding contributions to the national or international sports through education, research, or service. His career accomplishments and achievements are recognized with his 1998 induction into the NAI Hall of Fame. He's also a 1987 inductee into the IBCA NAI Hall of Fame. At the national championship, he posted three victories on his way to a berth in the NAIA Fab Four. It was the first time in history the Bearcats reached a semi round, semifinal round of the national tournament. He made, McKendry made its first NAIA tournament appearance back in 1987 and 88. That season, the Bearcats opened the year with 22 consecutive wins on their way to a school record of 35 victories. In its first ever national tournament game, McKendry and its first round opponent here in college combined for 231 points in a game scored 124 to 107 with a Bearcat victory. The combined point total sent an NAIA record that stood for nearly 20 years. Along with his coaching duties, which are numerous and huge, Statham is an assistant professor of physical education at McKendry. Statham and his wife Rose reside in Belleville.
He's unbelievable. Yeah, that's quite a career. Unbelievable. Yeah, what a guy. Just sticking around for 45 years to get you into a lot of Hall of Fame just for your tenacity to hang hang in there. That, what, 1965 he started? That's incredible. And to be so successful is outstanding. You wanna... How about, how about my guy, though, uh, from Kimball, Nebraska, Adam Bohawk? I, I did not realize Watch. he was from there, and he's, uh, wow, he's uh, from Kimball, Nebraska. Is he your new best friend? He's going to be. I'm going to go meet the, the guy. <laughs> Here's a look at the first half stats. McHenry shooting 29% from the field and Southern Nazarene 45%. Southern Naz 14 of 31 from the floor, 3 of 10 from the arc, and they only took four free throws, hit two of them. While McHenry 9 of 31 from the floor, 2 of 8 from behind the arc, 7 of 9 from the line. McHenry turns the ball over seven times, Southern Naz nine times. And uh, Southern Nazarene leads it here 33 to 27 after the first 20 minutes of play here in the first round of the NAIA National Championship Tournament hosted by Buffalo Funds. Of course, this is the uh, 74th edition of this tournament and 32 teams come to this tournament, the nation's toughest basketball tournament. Four blocks and four steals by a Southern Nazarene to only two steals uh, by McKendry. So some really nice defense going on by Southern Nazarene, which is one of the reasons they have the advantage. And 23 total rebounds for Southern Nazarene to only 18 by McKendry. But again, the numbers are not that far apart. The score is not that far apart. We've got a great game going here. Winner of this game will face Georgetown of Kentucky. Winners by seven over Olivet Nazarene. Georgetown waits in a 12-30 game tomorrow for either McHenry or Southern Nazarene. Meanwhile, warming up during the halftime break, Evangel and Xavier play the next game, and the winner of that game faces Concordia in the 2-15 game tomorrow. Georgetown and Concordia have both won on this court earlier today, and now McHenry and Southern Nazarene will play the final 20 minutes, maybe more, as they battle here in the first round of the NAIA National Championship Tournament. Folks, we remind you that Joskins is the official ring manufacturer for the NAIA. We provide rings for an exclusive circle of champions, including the NAIA. And Midwest Trophy Manufacturing is the official trophy and award provider for the NAIA. Check out Midwest Trophy and Manufacturing where they hand out the gold. It'll be from Midwest Trophy Manufacturing. Carla Cole and Rick Cole, Team Sports in Kansas City is where we do most of our damage as semi-professional announcers. We're also the voice of William Jewell College, and they will play later on today in this building. Hendry will have the basketball first. Brad Copeland picked up three fouls in the first half, two very early, and then a third when he tried to return late in the first half. He'll throw the inbounds pass for McKendry and White, and Southern Nazarene leading by six comes out in the black uniforms as we start the second half. Just want to mention one more time as we get started, thanks to the video crew. They're doing just an outstanding job and have been in all the games that we've done already. This is our fifth game here at the tournament, and They've done a great job on the shots. Abby goes to work immediately, but can't find the range. Yep, we thank New Lion and Jump TV as they're providing the wedding, uh, the the web stream video, the wedding video is what <laughs> I wanted to say. That was interesting. That ball tied up. Alexander down on the floor, and so they. Actually, I think took a 30-second timeout there before the possession could change. So just into the second half of the timeout, Southern Nazarene University and McKendry University. There's McKendry settled now. Take a look at the purple. Would you call that a lavender for McKendry? It's not a purple, really. It's I wouldn't call it uniforms. lavender. No, it's still that? too dark. And look at the cheerleaders' uniforms. They're dark. Purple. So I would say certainly their color is purple, but it is a light purple, just not quite to the lavender point. And so um, guys don't really want to be told they're wearing lavender yeah, either, I would, so I would say manly. purple. Okay, it is purple then. Yes. Carla is the expert on this. I need to point out that you're not wearing any St. Patrick's gear today. Did the St. Patrick's design person not show up at the house? No, actually I asked you to buy me a new outfit because I don't have any green in my closet, but you wouldn't. <laughs> That is not true. I did not ask yeah. you. Uh, Tell so. lies again on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I think that you can get by with that. And something about if you drink a lot or whatever, you don't have to tell the truth. Well, I'll, I'll try that later. How's that? I'm Apparently, nice. you've already been there. <laughs> not me. Shot by Xavier Alexander. Taken away. Ruckman got the rebound. He goes to work offensively against Alexander. Wow. Can't get it to go. Tip attempt by Copeland, but 
He can't get it back up on the rim, and a six-point lead for Southern Nazarene University as they bring the ball the other way. This is Henry. Good ball movement down to Jeremy Lightfoot. Head and shoulders fake, can't get it to go. Ruckman stuck with him pretty well through all he of really, that. He really did. He and Ruckman are a fun matchup to watch. Both are pretty physical players, and they've gone at it for a good part of this game. Andy Wolf, Copeland looking, nearly locked wow. it, but Hobby ends up with it. Lead pass underneath, Rockman left free. He's going down as Lightfoot, it took him two chances, but he drops it in as eight points. Rockman did a nice job of staying with it in spite of the player under on the ground under his feet, which happened to be Lightfoot. And West jumping one to the corner, threw it away. 